Hello there everyone, and welcome to Darth Mod Empire Total War, and this campaign for Poland-Lithuanian Commonwealth. A bit of a mouthful there, but there we are. So you guys voted, and 39% of you, out of the about 600 votes, want, wanted Poland. I actually thought I was going to be, to start off, I actually had the idea of that I was going to play Spain, that you guys was going to vote for Spain, and then as kind of the other that I had in mind was France and the United States. So Poland wasn't really on the map, but quite a few people had asked from it. Well, I mean, I choose these, the different, um, what's it called, the different options based on what you guys have asked for, and Poland didn't have that many compared to some of the others, like France and the United States. So it's kind of interesting how that changed. So I wasn't uh, at all kind of prepared in my head, like I didn't have really the ideas of it. Um, but yeah, we're gonna play as Poland, Lithuania. Not that there's any problem with that, I don't mean it like that, but I just... Like, in my mind, I started going, like, oh, Spain conquering the New World and stuff like that. And then that's a pretty big shift to go to Poland. Um, especially also kind of because with the late part of the Prussian campaign, there was quite a few that really liked the naval battles. Poland isn't really a naval nation, is it? So that <laughs> that was a bit interesting. Uh, maybe people didn't realize that. Um... But then again, most of the factions you choose recently haven't been naval nations. Bavaria, Prussia, and now Poland. Um, and also, I thought to begin with that I was going to try, uh, try to do it in Imperial Splendor, because I hadn't done Imperial Splendor. Uh, turns out you can't play Poland in Imperial Splendor, it's not really made for that. And as far as I could see, they didn't have many mod units for Poland-Lithuania. Um, so we kind of scrapped that and I went for Darth Mod instead because we can have the um, 40 unit um, 40 unit saves so huge armies so that is what we're gonna do um, someone also said about Imperial Destroyer the thing about Imperial Destroyer I'm pretty sure it's been updated or changed um, since I actually pl played my Swedish campaign I would love if I could actually find the exact kind of setup that I had for my Swedish campaign because I really like the uniforms in Imperial Destroyer. The thing is, um, Imperial Destroyer is really only beautiful. Everything else about it is absolute shit, if I may say so. Like on the bare bones and with the options and stuff. Uh, it's kind of trash, um, so you kind of need that. And the, the the important thing is, well, what I did was I. Now we're going off on a tangent here, which uh, probably shouldn't in the start. Everyone's bored and t tuned out. But like in Imperial Destroyer, without like modding it too much and using too many sub mods, um, each line infantry unit only has like enough for three or four volleys that's it which is like what this is supposed to be a you know musket line game empire and then you reduce them to have no ammo at all anyways we're gonna jump into the campaign i'm gonna s explain a bit and then i've already actually played a bit so we're gonna jump forward to a battle Right, and now we're in the campaign, so what I'm going to do here is mostly just explain kind of the situation, and then from here, four turns ahead, we actually go a battle, so I'm going to explain a little bit what is happening. So we're looking at the... with Poland. Someone's already actually kind of uh, guessed what the campaign goals are going to be. Um, which was, I can't remember exactly what the phrase was, I really liked it, but it's like, you know that card in Uno where you switch, where we're gonna part, basically we're gonna part, the, the nations that part, parted Poland, that split them up, we're gonna, we're gonna split them up, or we'll make them uh, vassals of Poland, 
So there's three main, of course, Russia, Prussia, and Austria. Well, those are the, the, the ones that... Um, so those are our main enemies, and my goal will be to subjugate them as vassals in a certain order, as we start as allied with Russia. And I'm not complete crazy. We're not going to go declare war on everyone. Then we have sub goals because, as you can see, we're not that actually um, in bad terms. We're in so sort of bad terms, but we're on even badder, worse terms, badder terms, worse terms with Sweden and the Ottoman Empire. So we kind of have those two as sub quests, which I think the Ottoman Empire is more likely to be a nation to uh, that I might attack than Sweden. But Sweden, we have um, kind of a sub goal with. Sigismund giving Poland a claim to the Swedish throne and we can kind of figure out something there um, and then Ottomans it's obvious we kind of need to stop the Ottoman spread uh, into Europe we're gonna send the winged Tsars. a bit disappointed I am uh, speaking speaking like Yoda all of a sudden um, to find that uh, I can't recruit um, the uh, lances, the Polish lances, until army board, which is quite a bit away, until we can actually get the winged hussars. Um, so that's kind of the the general plan. Now I'm going to explain what happened. Uh, rolling up to the battle, we're going to load a save and go to. Um, so four turns from here, uh, we end up at war. We actually end up at war with a number of nations. My first plan was actually to go to war with a nation that Russia is at war with, which is namely the Ottoman Empire. They're at war with them, so I thought, you know what? We're gonna try to keep ourselves like we don't want to get, uh, you know, split again with the Germans coming from one side and the Russians coming from one side and crushing us in the middle. We don't want that to happen. So we kind of want to keep to start off since we already have a, a good terms with the Russians we're gonna try to keep that so that was my idea plus I had an army right here and we had uh, Moldova here which didn't have a garrison so perfect target I thought however Sweden declared war on Russia and since they're my ally I joined in so I was gearing up towards actually going toward Estonia instead uh, one of the things that I should mention here is that we start very underdeveloped in terms of like what troops we can recruit. Only really in the capital do I have serious troops. And even then I can only get two at a time. And then out in these I mostly get pikemen, which I can only actually get one more because they're capped at six. Um, so really slow start there. And then what happened was, I kind of saw it coming, because each turn, each of those four turns, Prussia came with some ludicrous idea um, where I would trade away Western Prussia. So I wasn't going to give them a territory for, you know, they wanted an alliance in exchange for that. I kind of thought I was safe when Prussia declared war on Austria, but... Uh, then they actually did declare war on me and they're bringing in a pretty sizable force from Eastern Prussia to attack Gdansk. I did move this army over there and we have some extra troops. So hopefully I'll be able to defend that and that massive uh, Prussian army and we can actually possibly strike the Prussians out here in the beginning. But that's kind of explaining the situation here. So we kind of have, just to recap, then we're going to try to, we're going to take over. And what I'm hoping to do is actually make them into vassals. Because I think that would be the, the humiliating them on the same way that they humiliated Poland. Um, so we're going to uh, vassalize the Austrians, the Prussians and the Russians. And then as side quests, we'll have Sweden and the Ottoman Empire. I'm trying not to go further than that. It might be that other nations declare war on us, uh, but we're not going to go any further there. I don't think we're going to develop a navy at all. Maybe if I can get some trade ships away, 
that would be nice. But other than that, that's uh, roughly how far we go. And also I'm going to try with the Ottomans not to go further than uh, Constantinople. We're not going to go into these territories and stuff like that. With that said, we're going to jump two years, I think it is. Four turns for uh, in 40 saves. There's two turns or it, two turns is a year. So four, there will be two. So it's 1702 when the Prussians decide to attack. Gdansk and try to take it from us. So I'm gonna jump over to that and we're gonna see about if I'm able to hold that and that Will be this first video of the Polish Lithuanian Commonwealth trying to avenge or stop uh, The I don't know what we call it eventual future Right, let's go over to that battle then Right, so here we have it. Hopefully, uh, uh, the, uh, up until this point, I've explained it well enough for you guys to actually s uh, uh, kind of understand what's going on. So, my situation is actually rather bad because of the fact that I'm not really able to recruit a lot of troops in a lot of areas. And we are at war with Sweden and Prussia, which isn't great. So, I have an army of 2,000 men against the Prussian army of 3,000. As you note, a large part of my army is pikemen, militia, and armed citizenry. I don't have a fort. I don't actually have any proper troops. Uh, the Prussian force consists of cavalry, which I don't have. They consist of a lot more cannons than I. So, and look at also the stars of that. General Alexander Zhu. We can't see what he's called, but judging by the fact that he's got a much bigger wig than our guy does, um, is not looking good, so we might lose this off the bat. The thing is, um, Sweden isn't really in a position to attack us since they declared war on Russia. They're mostly going against Russia, I imagine. Which means that I have a possibility to draw in troops um, to the little island which East Prussia kind of is in the middle there. So even if they do win here, I, they could just end up... Um, Leaving East Prussia, which is much more valuable province, leaving that up for me to grab. So hopefully you've understand everything that kind of going on, going on uh, up until this point. And now for a bit of bloodshed, shall we? To break up the monotony of my um, explaining. Right, so we're in a really bad situation. I've got really poor troops. Uh, and kind of everything here, but I can't g guess this is a good one kind of to remind you guys that like I, I get that some I mean you want to give advice and stuff, but sometimes I don't necessarily see it as a negative thing when like disasters occur that kind of gives it character. I mean, it's not a speed run I'm doing it's uh, you kind of give it a bit of flavor if you put in a bit of disasters there a bit of you know when you don't use the um, when you don't use the slow motion to like um, because I mean because it's not a speed run you don't come here watching I hope to see the absolute best possible result that could be achieved. It's like an interesting story that kind of comes through, um, you know, how stuff the walls, um, which, I mean, is the thing that separates sort of people who do the campaign stuff against people who do uh, just do battles, I guess. Well, that's why, like, how, uh, um, campaigns can be more interesting than just doing battles. Right, with that said, let's go ahead and start and see if I cannot... At least I will g hopefully give Prussia a bloody nose. We're firing round shot with our mortars. We're firing round shot... Oh, I don't even have canister. Could you, otherwise, you can kind of bank on canister to really bring it home. So we shot down one of the Prussian's cannons. 
Um, not that they're gonna help much because they have tons. And they have tons of infantry. A lot of it is, however, um, militia units. Jesus Christ. I haven't lost a cannon yet, but we've lost plenty of troops. Damn. Um, maybe I, you know what? We'll move, try to move the pikemen over here instead. Partly because cavalry is on the way from over there. And partly because uh, the forest will kind of shield the pikemen, hopefully, from getting absolutely torn up by cannon shot. So we got Prussian cavalry ready to move into the flank. I don't... Jesus Christ. Okay, move into square and then the militia unit will retreat behind the square. Behind the big pike square. And hopefully, one of the things about like the pike squares and squares in empires, they're not as effective as they are in Napoleon. But it seems as though we uh, sent the Prussian unit away. I really don't want to see these guys back. So I'm going to charge after them. And then we're going to go back into position here. It looks really like they are focusing in on my, my pikes. Um... I don't know if it was better down here because kind of low ground. Let's see if the general can continue. I'll, I really don't want to see those guys again. We've got kind of a large Prussian formation. Interesting how they move there in the open. I, you'd imagine kind of in a real life scenario that they wouldn't actually march through the woods because it would be difficult to actually maneuver and get your troops through there and it would slow them down so they would kind of send as they're doing here send most of the units through the open ground and then um, have them uh, sort of move out here and make a line before they start to uh, move towards our high ground slight high ground I mean the cannons are on high ground we have a little bit of high ground and again please don't try anything uh, right I th I think we're just gonna get residual, like, musket fire if I keep my pikemen back here. So I'm gonna see if we can't move them off to the flank. Oh shit, we got. Oh, it's the bodyguard. I want the mortars to focus in on the troops that are actually moving up here. The line infantry moving in on the flank. Oh, we only. We only have first rank firing, the first few units in the ranks. But then again, it is early campaign. Oh, now the Prussians have started firing back. The thing is, there's not a lot of maneuvers I can do when the um, enemy outnumbers us. Damn, they're, they're firing professional volleys while we kind of haphazardly just firing a bit, little bit as it goes. Um, maybe I can break through here. We got weaker troops on that side. Pikemen plus um, citizen plus general going through here, turning the flank and going on to the regiment of foot. We're actually kind of breaking this militia regiment. Which is opening up for us to charge in and get rid of the second one. Here comes the general to join in. In the charge. On the other side, it doesn't look too good for uh, the other men. See if we can sh shoot those guys down. Close range fire. You know what? We're going to go... We're going to go for that one furthest to our left first oh they're even moving away the idiots and then the general and his bodyguard strike 
riding through the unit. And before they can regroup and form a proper defense, the pikemen have struck. And the unit is getting overrun. The general moves through, making ready to strike the enemy from the back. Jeez. They got a lot of troops coming in there. And as the general comes from the back, the armed citizenry see their cue and attack from the front. And we attack them from both sides. And we break up that unit. But now there's a lot of Prussians here. So we kind of need to retreat. And I'm thinking maybe the pikemen will cover our retreat. Uh, I'm putting gunfire down in there to break them up. Oh, we can see a lot of units of the Prussians are actually pushing back. See, General, go back. A lot as long line as possible. And I think now is the time, actually. Now is the time to turn the tide of battle. Can I get my cannon to shoot for the Prussian cannons? And you know what? Let's chase them. Get out of your positions. And charge down the Prussian army. Send them away. Now they do have professional line infantry troops here. I don't like the fact that the general is turning up in my flank. Ooh, let's see. The militia will charge through and get right at the line infantry regiment. And the other one will follow. Thing is, I've got the Empire Total War. Um, what's it called? Um, playlist playing. And so far I haven't like looked through it. So we might hear like Indian music turn up at some point. And stuff like that. So at some point I will go through and I will make sure to like remove the sort of oriental music stuff out of it. Master stroke here by the Polish general. The Polish general will actually move to get rid of the cannons while his uh, troops there will march on and try to defend defeat this one line infantry units that's still there. Let's see if we can get these guys before they fire. They are reloading. Jo Ooh, they're about to fire just... Oh, they did fire. But the po- okay, so shit. Okay, the guys are back. And our units are retreating. So weren't really quick enough. I should have been quick enough to actually tell my men to leave our prepared positions. At least the enemy cannons are gone. I'll take the general to retreat. Um, right, set up behind the wall and then the pikemen will be back here. And then if I can get my general to actually respond he will make his way over here. Oh, they shot everything down here. They must have focused on that one. Right, I want the mortars fo focusing in on the 5th regiment. General's bodyguard lost half its man. Power. And the Prussians are coming on for a second attempt. At... Uh, damn. Attacking. Oh, we've got one other unit back. Nice. The thing in, in a prolonged firefight, that's not going to really work out. We're going to have this militia garrison move over and take over the pikeman's position. And hopefully... I mean, we broke them once before. Hopefully we can break them once more. I'm going to focus in on the pikemen because there's a lot of those guys.
That commanding general is nowhere to be seen. Okay, we're gonna leave our positions with the pikemen to stop the enemy pikemen, hopefully. Demi cannon units moving forwards. The armed citizenry doing their best to kind of break the Prussians as they come on. Damn, look at this guy. Outnumbered by tons of men. I've got to remove that stupid guy. It looks like we're actually break we're we're breaking them for a second time. This time I'm gonna be more hot on their heels. And we're gonna chase make sure that we chase them down. And now when everything's gone, I'll order the cannons to very unceremoniously try to murder the enemy general by cannon fire. And I think that's it. I'm actually winning the battle. Um. Very good. And yeah, some might wonder, because I was a bit unsure actually, what difficulty level uh, it is on these 40 uh, unit saves. But as far as I'm told, I, do, it's, I think it's hard... Uh, for campaign and hard for like uh, battle um, so I think there might be one higher instance of difficulty but it's uh, pretty difficult still right what are what cannon shots who is firing over there I'm ordering you guys that you're not gonna snipe out my glorious general after having defeated you in open battle. I would rather your retreat. Right, if one unit still coming back here. I don't want to take them on in the forest. We're gonna move towards the high ground. Are they charging? It sounds kind of like the enemy general is charging. Pikeman forms square. Yes, they are charging. No, not my pikemen. They fought so valiantly throughout this. No, all my units are now breaking apart. Uh, cannons hold fire. We're firing on our own men at this point. Yes, the enemy general. Alexander Sudona Slaububitten is breaking down. However, most of my army is breaking down as well. One unit remains. We'll meet them on the field. Make a long line as possible. The general will move to the hill, flank them from over there, and all cannons will now concentrate fire on the 4th regiment. And we'll try to break them down. By the spirit of the winged hussars, we'll come down the hill and swipe those Prussians off the field. So from a position right about here, where the Prussians hopefully can't actually attack us or shoot at us. And then they'll move into the range of the armed citizenry. They'll fight with them. And then the general can sweep in from the side. Jesus Christ, the accuracy on your gun, sir. That's your own general. You're supposed to be firing over here. How did they... How are they landing shots over here? Oh, wait. There must be enemy artillery somewhere, right? Maybe hidden in the forest. I don't know. They can't fire from concealed position, can they? Oh, they're breaking apart. Okay, you're... 
aim is god awful to hold fire. One last charge with his general and his bodyguard. The Prussians run as soon as they see him. And I believe I can call this victory. And so Poland, the Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth, has achieved its first victory. And uh, we are forcing the enemy back. It would be wonderful if you could just take the uniforms from Imperial Destroyer and just drag them on over into this. Because there's so there's so much more like game options and stuff for all the other mods. The Imperial Destroyer just removes everything to the bare bones. Where you can like barely even sign peace treaties with people. Anyways, um here we have that, so let's go back to the campaign map. Along with a break Battle break statistics, are they displayed here? No wonder, right. So, uh, heavy losses on both sides. 900 Prussians remaining, 650 of ours. However, we remain on the field while the Prussians uh, have to go back home to Königsberg to lick their wounds. F they killed 600! The pikemen killed 600 as well. Only a three-man difference there in the uh, kills. Uh, Demi cannon did really poorly. Mortars, god awful. They killed two people each. Not very good. But there we have it. First battle, very good. Let's let it run through and let's just take a look at the campaign as it is right now. Bye bye, Pr Prussia. Right, and here we are post-battle. Uh, the Prussians have retreated into the little town of Tannenberg. Hmm. Your region um, is the central city oh yeah, you have to do this to regroup your troops. Trains gain, very good. Recruitment. I... Oh yes, they declared war on Austria, so their main army on the Leopold von Anhalt Dessau, or Dessau is moving to Prague, leaving their capital open for attack. They also left Königsberg up for attack. So, I mean, this army is not going to move. This army could move, and they could be bringed it, brought in to aid this army. So I think next time around we'll see the Battle of Tannenberg slash the Siege of Königsberg. And then further on, um, I think we'll go for a complete destruction or complete um, takeover of Prussia at this point. So after we push through there, we'll push all armies over to vassalize Berlin and achieving one third of our goal and um, from there we'll see where we go. I need you to shut up. Right. With that said, I hope you enjoy this and hopefully we'll see Poland go into space. Bye.